Let's just agree, sure. Uh, Mr. Fleischer, will you, will you be uh, looking to some of the uh, findings that were found in the copper reports of last year uh, to see that they uh, correct them? Uh, on a regular basis, um, the finance director and I have a discussion on that. Um, all I have is moral suasion, um, and I certainly encourage him and you know the, the department uh, to make as much progress there as possible. So, and that's about as much as I can do, Mr. Greedy. <laughs> you do talk to them. About Absolutely. Okay. Uh, you know, I do so. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Okay, moving along, we have an appointment. Ms. Appa. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, we do. I uh, need an appointment for C.C. Gerlich for Parks and Recreation Board uh, until December 31st, 2018, submitted by the school board. Um, do I have any comments from my uh, colleagues on the appointment of Ms. C.C.? Thank you, Ms. Appa. I just want to state that I know Ms. Uh, Gerlach quite well. I've worked with her, and she is most deserving of this position, and I congratulate her to that. She will certainly be a uh, benefit. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, I just want to say sorry for the delay, Cece, but it's got nothing. It's all right. <laughs> Mr. Roberts? Yeah, I would just also like to sort of piggyback on President McLean's comment. I'm happy that this got resolved in the way it did so that we have not set a precedent that I know many members of this council would not have agreed with. So I'm very happy that it's come forward and we have a resolution to it. And I'd like to just say thank you to everyone involved for that. And congratulations. Uh, Mr. Green. Yes, I, I also follow suit with my uh, colleagues. Uh, it's about time, and I'm glad that you uh, want to give more of your time to the community. Uh, you know, you're working hard as a vice president of the job. I think you're still the vice president of the job. That's what they say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> more, more than your school board, <clears throat> and uh, coming to the city uh, and helping us out in, uh, in your capacity. So I'm very well, very much welcome. I'm sorry. Um, no, it's okay. Congratulations, CC, and we have a lot to to do. Welcome aboard. Uh, congratulations. Yay, Cece. Yay. <laughs> Is there any comments from the board? Uh, oh, was there some? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't see anybody. I thought we only had four members. We have seven? <laughs> I'm sorry. We want to wake you up. Anyway, I would like to congratulate Cece. I, I know that she's a positive influence I, in both the schools and the community, so I, I know that you're going to be nothing but an asset to this to this board. Thank you, Mr. Glazier. Oh, you're not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just joking. Yeah. Well, we have any comments from the public? Good job. Good job. Any public? No. Oh, okay. Seeing none. <laughs> uh, family consent. Family consent. Yeah. Family consent. Family consent. Yes. Okay. Congratulations, Cece. So would you like to say something? Uh, no, just thank you. Um, and I look forward to uh, April, maybe we can look at Ordinance 164. That's all. Oh, so, okay. all right. That's it for me. Okay, then we'll go to ordinances for final passage. Uh, Mr. Hanlon, bill number one. Uh, bill number one amends the capital fund budget to provide for supplemental appropriation of $103,500 as a result of a grant from the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development to assist in the creation of the uh, Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Trail. Uh, I guess we'll go to the administration. Anything to add? This is just to appropriate money that has been awarded to the city through the DCED for design and construction of the MLK Trail from the incinerator property to uh, the Lehigh Parkway. And it was passed favorably by, by the committee. By the committee. And I have to apologize. We had a Parks and Rec committee meeting tonight in Arizona. I was out in the hall. I apologize. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. Okay. Any, any questions from uh, council? From the public? Mr. Hammond. OK, 
Okay, on the, uh, on the, uh, the Sapper. Yes. Mr. Grady. Yes. Mr. Hendricks. Yes. Mr. McLean. Yes. Mr. Mona. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Zuko. Yes. Mr. Thank you, sir. Bill number nine. Bill number nine, and man's the street, water, sewer, and parks uh, uh, bill uh, by clarifying rules for what cannot be brought into city parks. It specifies what types of other power driven mobility devices can be used in the, uh, in the parkway. Uh, and it establishes rules for the use of the dog park, and it prohibits swimming in creeks that are. Ms. Bona, this was your committee. Yes, and we met February 28th, and um, it was passed forward with no recommendation. Right, I remember that. Um, any, any comments on council? What you have, what, what, why you could, you, you could get to a, uh, a uh, decision? No recommendation. Ms. Taylor, why um, speak about Bill 9, please? Certainly. I believe that the bill was passed forward um, so that the entire council will have an opportunity to consider it. Uh, the, the bill, uh, several things are happening or going on in the park system via projects and issues that cause us to take a look at the park regulations ordinance and recommend uh, various changes to it. Uh, there were four or five uh, significant issues that we looked at. One concerned the use of what we call other power-driven mobility devices. Uh, it's a general <coughs> definition for anything up to cars, anything with engines and wheels. Um, our parks, uh, we have trails in the Lehigh Parkway that we were looking at that led us to look at this policy. Um, we would have been requested to allow vehicles to have free access in the parks. So we wanted to take a look at it and follow the Department of Justice rules as it concerns considering these types of devices for those with mobility impairments um, and recommended a policy to address that. Uh, we looked at the trails in the parkway. Uh, we followed the DOJ's uh, requirements as it concerned conducting an assessment of the trails and recommended restricting uh, vehicles on the stone trails in the Lehigh Parkway to uh, electric power only. 36 inches, no wider than 36 inches, um, and um, no heavier than 550 pounds. Um, so that was one of the major uh, changes in, the, in our park regulations. The second concerned, we're about to open our first off-leash dog park, so we needed to uh, identify the one place in the city where dogs are officially allowed off-leash, and that is the Dixon Street Dog Park. Uh, the proposed changes to the regulations also include various rules for the dog park uh, that are contained in the ordinance. There's a, a whole page of, of rules uh, for the park that's expected to open in mid late spring. Uh, the third issue concerns the uh, problem that we have of swimming in creeks and city parks. Uh, last year, you know, a young girl, about 12 years old, almost drowned in Jordan Creek. Uh, and, and there have been over the years uh, several rescues that have had to be made in our city creeks. So we wanted to uh, address that. Um, and um, put that in place. And that's the number one reason for safety. The second reason is that increasingly in our parks uh, where we have no swimming holes on the weekends, uh, large groups are congregating at these holes in our parks um, for the day, bringing tents, grills, music, alcohol. They're staying for the day um, in creeks that are stocked for trout fishing. Um, in parks that are used by joggers, walkers, horseback riders, and bicyclists, more, more passive activities, um, pretty much appropriating whole sections of the park, uh, um, which is not what these parks are basically for. So we added this restriction in there as well. Um, the final two issues concern the issues of permitting in the parks. Again, in response to the growing um, number of large groups that come into our parks on the weekends and set up for the day, um, invariably bringing amplified music um, and grills of their own other than the designated city grills. So we're trying to make sure that our parks are for everyone and we have to kind of find a middle line that, that allows everyone to enjoy our parks. So we added restrictions for amplified music and grills in designated uh, city 
uh, provided grills. And the final big change was that these large groups also uh, often are starting to misrepresent themselves on their permit applications. So we have groups that come in and say they're family picnics, when in fact um, on one occasion it was a charter bus from Boston with softball and tents and a big it was a huge big deal. So um, we want to put in place that misrepresenting um, activities and events on your permit application will lead to your ability not to be able to use our facilities in the future. I think those are great uh, ideas. Uh, I just want to, do, do we have a session for people who want to bring their own grill? We have, if you, if you uh, rent or reserve a pavilion that has a grill area, you can bring your own grills. But the, what's happening is people that go into the parks and bring their own grills, they leave them behind, they leave broken grills, they leave broken tents, they leave broken chairs. And we spend most of the day Monday cleaning up and spending valuable resources cleaning up after um, things that people have left behind. Yeah, I, I understand that. In fact, I heard that people came over and uh, chained the grill to a tree one time and came back next week to, uh, to find it, but that, that's uh, unacceptable. Mm -hmm. However, I also know that it's a limited amount of grills in, that we can offer people and that we need to uh, have, you know, a lot of some, some places, at least an area, uh, for people who don't, who, who bring the grill, since uh, we only have such an hour. Yes, we, we, it is our, we are working on adding, adding designated grills to picnic groves and securing funding for additional pavilions as well so that groups can, can rent. We have more pavilions available for rent. And the whole issue with the music, good, thank you. Uh, Mr. Taylor, last year we addressed this uh, about the um, of the grills. Did we add more grills uh, from the last time we spoke last year? We did in Jordan Park. We did yes. I mean, we added a new pavilion with grills in that area. Uh, what park was that? Jordan Park. Oh yeah, with Jordan. Any other parks that we added any more? No. Um, you're gonna, but you were, as Mr. Greedy stated, we are going to add more. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you going to need more patrols? Um, Yes. <laughs> okay, never mind. I'll that. <laughs> good job. I think all these rules and regulations are good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Motor, but I think the reason we sent this to full council was so everybody, because there's, there's a lot of changes. Yeah, there's there's many changes, yeah, okay. including the cost. Yeah. Any other questions from council? Well, you know, the, the one thing I must say is. Uh, in the last couple of years, there have been a lot of people coming from outside of Lehigh Valley, yeah. using our parks, and creating a lot of problems to the point that in Bethlehem, Sorkin Park, I mean, not Sorkin Park, right? Yeah, yeah Sorkin yeah. Park, Talking that's why, yeah. They had to close the park <coughs> several times. Uh, in Easton, uh, the Louise Moore Park, they had to close it. There was another place, uh, I think it was in Nazareth. And, you know, our parks, I as a councilman don't mind sharing the park with other people that don't pay taxes here, you know, because uh, they're open ground. But at the same time, they need to adhere to our laws and our regulations, and we need to be forceful of that. Because we have beautiful parties, and I want to make sure that they stay pristine. And General, General <coughs> Trexler and the uh, Trexler Foundation would like that as well, I'm sure. Thank you. <coughs> sure. I, I, I do agree with um, oh, okay. Council reading, but at the same time, I think that the public should be also educated, you know? And, and if we say that we're gonna do something, we have to enforce it, which means that we're gonna have to give out more tickets, and we're gonna have to have more manpower, <coughs> because the reality is there's rules, but if you don't enforce it, then what? And I don't, I don't blame people coming, you know, wanting to come here to our parks. We have one of the best parks in PA, in my opinion. Thank you. Anybody else from council? Public? Come on up. Hi, uh, my name is Valerie Chambers. I haven't been here before, so I didn't know. <coughs> um, I, I, for one, am against the prohibiting, the prohibiting of swimming in the creeks. And my reason is because I grew up here and we swam in the creeks. And up until just maybe 30 years ago, 
would take a tube, start at one end of the creek, end at the other end of the creek a whole day. I don't know why it can't be, I don't know why you just can't enforce who's there. I also feel as though we're not letting people, certain people, come and have these picnics, which I've heard about from Salkin and everywhere else. To me, it doesn't feel inclusive. It feels uh, as though, once again, certain people are being sought out when I don't know why we just can't enforce. One day, we had a reunion of our own of some nowhere do wells from up around 22nd and Liberty, and the police came and said we could not have, we didn't have a permit, so we had to move, so it was no problem. So I don't know why, if, some, if there's a large group, why someone just can't come and say you have to move, it's time to go. Um, instead of, growing up in the creeks was part of Allentown, period. We have the best park system in practically the country. And for it to be limited to we can only walk on the trail, you can't go in the woods, you can't do this, you can't eat that sandwich, you can't have that sandwich, you can't have this music, seems really, I don't know the word, um, restrictive. And, and some people just like to enjoy the park, and I don't know that that has to be a thing of like, you don't live here, you can't enjoy our park system. I don't think our park, I don't think Central Park in New York City was built with the idea outsiders can't come. And I want Allentown to be inclusive. I do not want us to be like Salkin Valley. If anybody just saw the recent documentary, I don't know why we want to be associated with that. So I'd rather see us be inclusive. And if there is a problem, we have a police department. We can use it. We used it Saturday night for a rap concert. Why can't we use it for the park system? And that's it. We are being inclusive. All we're asking is people to follow the rules. Well, right. And right. it's easy to say we have a police department, but in the summertime especially, they get really taxed. And to, to run around enforcing park regulations is a little bit tough for them. And when we go back to swimming, I remember 30 and 40 years ago swimming in the creeks too, but we're in a much more litigious society than we were 30 or 40 years ago, so we have to look at that. Do we no longer have park police? No. We don't. The, 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 the park police officers that you're referring to are no longer there, so it's okay. a regular police department. Okay. Yeah. All right. As the uh, president said, we're not in, or excluding anybody. Mm -hmm. It's just that we're going to put certain rules mm -hmm. uh, because they are getting overused and it's, putting, it's really taxing our police department and it's taxing park, uh, park property and uh, services of the city. But at this point, nobody's put that out there as, you know, as, as a person, I know every single one of these parks like the back of my hand, including behind the state hospital. I, you know, and so, you know, anytime under 35 years of age, I utilized it all, and I would just like to see other people be able to do the same. So, right, right, I could comment. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, I made it a point <clears throat> to go to Jordan most of the time to swim and to see the difference, um, what it was like on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And especially on Monday, when I would go there in the morning, it would take an entire day of a crew to clean up. Right. Now, right. 30, 40 years ago, right. we didn't have that. We right. didn't have people bringing their, their, right. their stuff and leaving it there. Mm -hmm. But And this is why, as the president um, uh, stated, that times have changed. And uh, like I said, I made it a point, and if you make it a point to, um, and it was mostly out of state license plates during the weekends. And uh, I, like I said, if you make it a point to go and look at our parks on the weekend and see what they no, do to our parks, you know, uh, it, um, it, it's almost like we have to make these rules, but they're, they're going to be destroyed. Right, and well, that, that would bring me to another issue, which I'm sure is not the place right now. I'll bring it back, but we need a strong litter law that needs to be enforced. It's, it's outrageous. I live in the parkway, and it's outrageous that I come out every day and see trash everywhere it is. So I agree with that. But we also don't enforce the no litter laws. You know, so. Okay. Uh, I, I just want to say that um, I do agree with you. Um, we have to be, um, it is important to, you know, to be able to enforce, you know, the rules. But I, I also wanted to know that um, 
it's horrible when you see a child almost drowning. And as a matter of fact, a couple of, a couple of years ago when I uh, came into Ganso, uh, I saw a, a, a child almost drowned near me. And you know that we had the media there, you know, he was right in front of us. Did you recall that? Yes, I It was horrible. And um, that's one of the reasons also why we, all, we put um, a lot of signage. Um, I think that we need to do that again. I understand what you're saying that, you know, it's great to be free, you know, it's nice to swim, but the reality is, you know, our water is also getting polluted. Right. So we have to be mindful of that. Right. Okay. And, and the other thing with that, because I agree, you don't want to see somebody drown, but signage is a good thing. Like mm -hmm. we also knew, you don't swim in, you don't swim in the Lehigh, you, you're going to die. If you go and jump in the Lehigh, you're going to die. So signage, and I don't know that, like I said, I'm not really I'm a little bit older, so I'm not out there checking out the water holes anymore. But it was an enjoyable part of my life, my childhood, even at Cedar Beach. Instead of going in the pool, we went in the creek. So, so safety. I think that you know, for me, safety is number one. And believe it or not, I was traumatized with that. It happened. It almost happened right in front of me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public? Just a quick point to, as I said earlier, in regards to General Drexler. Just for Emily's point, uh, General Drexler, we had agreed that we need to keep a park right. Not that we would agree. We had agreed. Emily? Yeah. I know that he's dead. <laughs> uh, she knows what I'm talking about. She's putting it. There was one talking <laughs> For those of you who don't know in the audience, General Drexler has been dead for quite, for quite a few years, so I think <laughs> you'll just clarify. Just clarify. Okay, anybody else from the public? Seeing nobody. Mr. Hanlon. Okay, on uh, Bill 9, Mr. Green. Yes. Mr. Hendricks. Yes. Mr. Clay. Yes. Mr. Mona. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Thank you. Okay. The next one, please. Bill 10 amends the parks and recreation fees by increasing the fees for non-residents. Ms. Taylor. Yes, this is a, a change for us. Uh, previously, we just had straight across the board fees for both residents and non-residents. Uh, we switched that a little bit last year by implementing a hot weather advisory uh, policy on those days requiring residency, which worked well. Uh, but with the change uh, and the reopening of Cedar Pool, we believe that we will again um, face a, a, a pressure from non-residents coming to use the pool, trying to, wanting to use the pool, both local and from far away, and we want to uh, prepare ourselves for that. Uh, there was a problem, uh, not a problem, it was a similar renovation last year in Palmer Township. Uh, they did not prepare for it. They were uh, overwhelmed with non-resident um, visitors that wanted to use the brand new awesome pool, but uh, it overwhelmed it and impacted residents' ability to use the pool. And then they had to react on the defensive with a policy. We wanted to think about this up front um, and uh, just uh, implement a non-resident fee. Um, my staff has been uh, trying to respond to questions that were raised at the Parks and Recreation Committee meeting about how we do this. And we're confident that we can do this. We have confirmed that uh, Allentown School District issues IDs that the students keep. Um, and so they would have an ability to uh, prove, prove residency. Um, again, um, we have various additional opportunities to provide residency should families and uh, children uh, purchase the season passes, which is if you're a regular visitor, season pass is the way to go. And then you prove it once, you have your photo ID, and you're good for the season. Uh, staff also knows who you are after if you go a couple of times and know who the kids are. So we've, we're fully confident that we can, um, with also the help from IT in um, a residency app on uh, our handheld um, tablets, that we can implement this policy. Thank you very much. Ms. Bogart. So that means that you're going to have more staff, right? No, it's, it would be our normal uh, gate attendants, the normal staff that checks people in at the pools. Mm -hmm. And you don't foresee any issues. I mean, we have a new, you know, new pool. Um, there's gonna, there's, it's, it's gonna be a line because you know that, you know, people just, just want to go and, and, and use it. The staff will be prepared for that. Um, we fully expect that, that the first couple of days, weekends, that it will be busy. 
Uh, but the word will get out. People will know what they need to do, and we're confident that um, that people will be able to adapt to the new policy. These are. Um, it is uh, something that other pools do. It's not anything out of the ordinary. Can it's you just tell me used to it. Can you tell me what the, um, you tried to implement something similar last year? For hot weather advisories, we had a resident uh, requirement for the discounted fee. Non-residents would pay the regular fee. Um, and um, it, uh, they got used to it. It, it worked. We had, to, I believe, uh, two fee advisories. OK, thank you. Robinson. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Ms. Taylor, thank you, first of all, for <clears throat> to me, uh, responding to the questions that I had uh, posed through to you through Mr. Hanlon. I just want to confirm on one thing that I'm right, that uh, Cedar Beach is actually going to be considered the same for hot weather, where you will have the discounted resident rate for residents, correct? Yes, it'll okay. be the same rates as Jordan and Mac. Okay. And my only question concerning the residency issue is I absolutely support having a different fee for non-residents. I think that's the right way to go. With Cedar Beach, with having the non-residents not being allowed to use it on the weekends. My one question is, um, happy that we're working with the school district on it, but what are we going to do concerning students that are either homeschooled, charter school, or private schools? We obviously aren't gonna be able to prove residency because they won't be given a school district ID, I don't believe. Uh, so how are we going to help determine residency for those children? Well, it's, it's part, of, part of it is promotion of the policy, part of it is working with the parents. I mean, there there's always going to be one or two that may not bring what they need, but we will do our best to work with them. It's not a, you know, necessarily black and white mm -hmm. kind of thing. We work with the kids, we work with the parents. Okay, so if there's an issue where you have, you know, because I know at least one member of our school board that I know uh, has a child that doesn't go to the Alton School District system. So if they would show up with one kid that doesn't have that ID, your staff is going to be willing to work with them to try and make that work. Yes. All right, that, that was my biggest concern, just so that we don't have an issue. Because as you said, it's, it's a brand new pool. There's going to be a lot of people interested in it. So we want to make sure that this is as flexible as possible. Yes. Thank you very much. Anybody else from council? Anybody from the public? All right, Mr. Hanlon. OK, I'm going to turn uh, Mr. Hendricks. Yes. Uh, Mr. McLean. Yes. Ms. Mota. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Dougal. Yes. Ms. Zappa. Yes. And Mr. Green. Yes. Thank you very much. All right, uh, bill number four, Mr. Hanlon. Bill number four is an ordinance authorizing the execution of a cable franchise agreement with Service Electric. Uh, Mr. President, I actually just saw, I don't know if he was playing the state, but Mr. Hamilwright from Service Electric just walked out. Yes, I saw that. I saw that also. <laughs> <laughs> he comes back. Maybe he was afraid of the boat. <laughs> but in the meantime, maybe the administration can, uh, can fill us in on this one. <clears throat> uh, I can take that for uh, Mr. Messinger. Um, Service Electric is a cable company within the city of Allentown. Uh, federal law, specifically the Cable Communications Act, grants municipalities the right to issue franchises to cable companies to provide services within their city. Um, this is a way to protect our rights of way as a, as a 5% fee based off their earnings, based off their curb cable services. A little more intricate than that, what it's actually meant, but basically that's how we make money based off of how well they do. Uh, the only reason to deny such a franchise is if we can show that the cable company cannot provide the services they say they're going to do. Obviously, Service Electric has been a company within the city of Allentown for numerous years. Uh, we've had a cable franchise agreement with them that just expired last year, so this is just continuing our long-standing relationship. Okay, thank you. Any questions from council? Anybody from the public? I'm dragging my feet to see if Mr. Hemingway comes back in. <laughs> <laughs> is he? Is he? Yeah, right, he's gone. I guess somebody okay. went out to get him. Call the vote? Yep. Yes. Uh, Ms. Mona? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Zuzuko? Yes. Zappa? Yes. Green? Yes. 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 Yes.
All right, it passed. Uh, one thing I do want to know for you, Mr. McClain. Uh, if you would, just step up here, please. The, the, this whole process took a lot longer than I wanted it to. The original franchise expired in July, and uh, I had to work with uh, your outside counsel to negotiate this new agreement. Um, since there was no franchise in place in January of this year, uh, the payment you would have received at the middle of February, uh, once I get the I signed copies of the franchise agreement, so we can countersign them and send you back the copy. I will send you a check, and I believe it's ninety-four thousand dollars and some odd cents. If you guys are due franchise fees, um, that check I will release to the city under this new agreement that we put them to. Right. Thank you very much. And with all due respect to our solicitor, we know what happens when attorneys came about. It takes a little bit longer. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. But it passed.